Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Centris Post. My name is Lauren Morris. We haven't done in a, vid a video for quite a while, so what I wanted to do was to come on here and just uh, do a little video to give you all something to watch and to check in a little bit. And I wanted to talk to you today about open source intelligence and Ukraine and how it's all working and what it means and how important it has been to the war. <clears throat> and so open source intelligence, otherwise known as OSINT, O-S-I-N-T, is the um, ecosystem where a person, whether you be a professional researcher, a journalist, open source um, intelligence uh, person, or really even the average person, depending on your skills, can go out onto the internet and you can collect and gather um, all the information that is available on a date and time, uh, an event, a person of interest, a, a, a terrorist network, whether that be domestic or foreign. <clears throat> and the information is out there on the internet. And companies have developed uh, software tools to use um, that you can gather this information and you can bring it down into one source. So like if you want to know, for instance, um, what a political person has said about a particular topic, um, you can uh, query that in various tools that are available and you can pull down um, every article um, that um, this person, where this person has been quoted saying something. Um, so let's just jump forward. Well, let me explain first of all that it's very powerful. And I like to um, compare it with music software. So prior to music software tools, you had to go to a recording studio and pay an engineer uh, to record you and your band and your music. And then they mixed it and mastered it and turned it into an LP, you know, an album or a CD or whatever. Then the digital world came, right? CD baby popped up, MP3 came up and everything just went digital. Well, the same thing happened with companies that were developing software tools, software tools to emulate instruments, um, software tools for recording, um, software tools for mixing and mastering. And this revolutionized the, in, the industry. And over the years, um, the software companies who build virtual instruments um, and build what, what they call plugins to make all these things happen have given the uh, ordinary person a lot of power to uh, produce their own music. You could, you know, go to school and learn to become an engineer. You could learn how to use these software tools and you could in a decent home studio do a great record, do your own, do your own recordings and then market and sell your stuff digitally uh, on the internet via your websites. So it, it was very powerful. Now, the same thing uh, happened with open source intelligence tools. And what these tools do is they go out and they scrub um, the internet universe and they will pull down pieces of information for what your question is or who you are looking into. And you can map out a network of connected people. You can connect dots and that's really important in um, how you absorb news. It's important to your critical thinking. It's important to have uh, into to you having accurate information. It's important for fact checking. It's important for all kinds of things. So what has happened in regards to Ukraine and why I want to talk to you about this is because I've been involved in open source work for a couple couple, you know, two, three years now. And prior to that, 
um, you know, I was a music producer. And so I, well, I still am a music producer. <laughs> so I use these software tools. I've got any and all of them that I, I can get my hands on. I love navigating the software tools. I love um, what they are able to do. So having worked uh, what we call in the box um, in music, I was able to um, tr translate those skills into open source intelligence skills and put together a puzzle for um, some Betty that I might be looking into, like Ramzan Kadyrov, you know, or um, uh, anybody, right? And um, you can pull down a lot of information. So when you have access to some of the best tools in the business, it is incredibly powerful because as a journalist or as a person who wants to, you know, um, inform others and tell others based on experience, you've got to have information from a lot of sources. So if you are doing your sourcing and your fact checking manually, um, it's difficult. You know, you're going to have a narrow scope um, and the narrow scope is what's a problem in um, in the average person's uh, intellect in terms of the news that they get, what they're being told on the news. And I'm talking specifically about American media right now, what your nightly news person is telling you or your morning news person is telling you. A lot of it is um, you get a little bit of facts and the rest of it might be opinion, right? This is their analysis. This is their opinion. You become addicted to people like this, like Tucker Carlson or Steve Bannon or Alex Jones or Nora O'Donnell or whoever you watch. You like what they're telling you, you know, it's a show, right? It's a show. And then suddenly, I mean, but this is penetrating and infiltrating your intellect. So if you collect your news from a handful of sources, then that's going to be uh, your intellect and your and opinion on what is going on. So it came to my attention um, at the beginning of the U Ukraine war that, um, you know, the, the mainstream media in the United States, specifically the alternative mainstream media that came from uh, Steve Bannon and downward um, was very anti Ukraine. And so then you can see all over Facebook and all over Twitter, you know, all of these um, false stories and lies about President Zelensky, uh, you know, about Ukraine. And it went from, um, you know, corruption to sex trafficking to money laundering. And, and how convenient was that? Because on the on the on the right, from the center right to to the hard right, you have um, loyalists to you know their party and to the people that they watch every day and every night that had a, you know grievances against Biden and and the Democrat Party and the left. So you have all those narratives, right? So the hatred for uh, Biden. And the narratives against Biden, justified as they were, suddenly became Ukraine is corrupt because of the laptop and, um, and then the narratives that were coming out showing Zelensky as an actor and this kind of thing. So do you see the dots that are being connected? The um, disgust and the disapproval for Biden um, the his son being a part of the Burisma company, um, which is a company, and then um, suddenly uh, that became uh, President Zelensky is a, a money launderer and uh, a puppet in the war, and so there's all these things. Okay, this is connecting the dots, and the dots are being connected from a very narrow scope. It could you know, whatever that scope is. So think about that. Now, I want you to think about this very carefully. What is your radar? What is your scope when you are digesting the news that you are digesting? And who is telling you all these things? And how does that make you think and feel? 
So these narratives, these anti-Ukraine narratives turned many in the right wing, especially the the base, you know, of like Steve Bannon's base or whatever, as an example, against Ukraine as a people, against Ukraine as a society. And people just looked, looked, you know, looked the other way. And, you know, that that becomes a problem because when you watch uh, European news, or if you are digesting material from a wide range of, of sources, um, then you're going to get a wider range of information that is coming down to you. So you can fact check yourself because it's not the best practice to just automatically believe everything, something that somebody like Tucker Carlson says, right? And just you know, because that is what your radar and you happen to like the show, the show every night. So what I specifically want to talk about in this regard, in terms of open source intelligence, is this is what I think happened. This is my opinion. This is what I think happened. Number one, I think that uh, the alternative uh, right wing media, I don't know what else to call them. The alternative right wing media didn't think the war was going to last very long. You know, they thought it was going to be three days in hell with Russia invading Ukraine, and that was going to be it. So it really didn't matter what they came out and said about Ukraine. It was going to be over and done with, and then they would move on to the next outrage of the day or the month and the next narrative. So so there's that. I also don't think that Putin expected that the young people of Ukraine who are intelligent and educated and um, have uh, tech abilities, you know, were going to be ready for this. And they were going to be able to mobilize their cell phones so I don't think that Putin and them realized that a lot of people on the ground in Ukraine, including the soldiers on the battlefield, were going to start whipping out their cell phones and recording events that were happening on the battlefield. I think it blindsided them. And I also think it has blindsided the press because in my view, from what I've seen from CNN to ABC to CBS, which I never see them use it, they started um, putting up uh, where they were getting their information from. And it could be uh, like Planet Labs or somebody like that who was showing um, maps and satellite maps, or it could be this source, or it could be that source to, to source where they were getting their information from. I think that this was really brand new that just started happening, um, when the Ukraine war, uh, after the invasion in February of 2022, they didn't expect it. And so here you've got these talking head types coming out and telling you all this stuff about Ukraine with nothing to back up what they say at all and not really used to it. You know, they are opinion journalists, they're experts um, in they're educated and they're experts. And so evidently their word is God and you should just believe what they say because they have sources, right? <laughs> so the open source intelligence has come out and it's really blindsided a lot of people and it's really made them look like fools. And because they're what they have been telling us is uh, incorrect and misleading and disinformation. And some of it is just, you know, outright lies. Okay. Outright lies. So they got busted with their pants down. And so, um, then on YouTube, um, you can go out on YouTube and you can find alternate sources of news. And there's some really great ones out there. You've got um, legitimate news companies like um, TVP, which is Television Poland. You've got DW. You've got, um, uh, you know, various ones like that. 
and they're out there and they're broadcasting on YouTube. So you can go out and you can have some other sources that are not American that have great roundtables and great experts and um, great analysis. And I've even seen them several times when they when the subject of the American media come up, they'll just be like, oh, my gosh. You know, they really made us look like clowns. They really have. So then um, also on YouTube, after the war, these started, these channels started pop, popping up. Um, also on Telegram, and they were military channels. They're Russian military channels, and they were Ukrainian military channels, and they were showing battlefield uh, first-person view, FPV, um, battlefield video. And those channels have uh, stayed, and there are some that are really great, and, and they are on YouTube and you can watch them. You can get great analysis. Also, you have the Institute for the Study of War that came out really quickly afterwards. And they started doing a daily account of um, the Russian-Ukraine war. And then when after Gaza, the, the Arab Gazans invaded um, Israel and started that, the Institute for the Study of War started coming out and doing their analysis. Well, they have evolved as well and they've gotten really good at what they've done and they've become a first authority. You have other, all kinds of think tanks um, that have experts that, that come out and talk. And you have numerous Ukrainian groups. And one of the groups that I belong to is called Conservatives for Ukraine, Conservatives for Ukraine. And that's on Facebook and it's on Twitter. And the people who um, I work with in that regard um, are authors and they are historians and they are experts in Russian history, Russian aggression, um, and people who are from Ukraine who have lived and studied the history of the relationship between Ukraine and Russia. You can learn about sabotage operations. You can learn about Russian aggression, um, historic Russian aggression. You can learn about what they wanna do and where they wanna go. You don't want to be the um, unfortunate person who watches an American media talking head every night who's telling you what they want you to think and giving you their really horrible, terrible, narrow view analysis of Ukraine every night. And because CNN came out and they tend to be pro-Ukraine, and then you have other people who are anti-Ukraine, which is once again, it's the Bannon crowd. Um, they're on opposite ends of each other and they're media, they're media people. So they have this, this tension and they're not about working together. They hate each other. Okay. And they demonize each other. And so um, the Bannon team are like, listen to us. We're the ones with the truth. We're the ones that are telling you the truth. And we are the only ones with the truth. Well, that's not the truth. <laughs> that is, that couldn't be further from the truth. And in fact, a lot of what they have said about Ukraine, um, the unfortunate narratives about Ukraine are, are have all been debunked. And now that that time is, has gone on and, um, you know, the war is where we are now, um, the debunking of the lies that they have told us is overwhelming. It, it's it's overwhelming and people are having a hard time going, but I liked them. I liked Tucker Carlson. I like Steve Bannon. I like Alex Jones, you know, and they're the good guys. And, and then we find out that there's people out there in the American media who are pumping out anti-Ukraine uh, narratives day and night and they're getting paid by Russia. <laughs> so. Anyway, as as a lay person, um, my recommendation for as as you, the lay person, I'm not going to consider myself the lay person because I do open source intelligence work. And um, so 
it, I'm not the lay person. Okay. A lay person is an, an average Joe who just might be offering opinion, you know, or eyewitness testimony or something like that. So if, if, if you are just, you know, a lay person who works your job and you go home and you watch the news every night, um, you know, there's so much more out there uh, to absorb and to and to look at. And all these people that have put out this unfortunate lies about Ukraine and have turned their audience away from watching the war or keeping up on the war that it's not a priority and we shouldn't be over there. And our military industrial complex is just making war and they're just making money and, and all these kinds of things. My answer to that is that you are missing an incredible time and you're missing um, the greatness of the Ukrainian people. You're missing the greatness of, of the situation that that they are in the tragic and fortunate situation that they are in and how they are suffering and what they are doing to fight the russian goliath and um we hear bad things about nato ooh nato bad ooh nato bad well a lot of people that say that i i doubt that they even watch a conference. And I doubt they even know who is their spokesperson right now or who, who he replaced. I doubt that they understand what um, the Polish people think about the war or the Finnish people, or especially the Estonians um, whom um, <laughs> are a small, tiny country, um, but they have the largest DD GDP uh, pumping into Ukraine or 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 Germany or the U Europeans. I mean, um, Brigitte Gabriel, somebody that I love, she says we shouldn't be involved in Europe's war. Well, okay, but we don't want. Okay, and and yes, maybe we could argue about you know who should share more of the burden and the responsibility because of the border, uh, because it's a border situation, right? Well. We just don't live in 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 that time anymore where it's not going to um, affect us in a mon in a monetary sense or a, a, a political sense. You know, there's a huge geopolitical shift that's happening that's happening right now. So um, back to uh, open source intelligence. If you Google it, OSINT, open source intelligence. Um, and you want to dive into it a little bit, um, you will find that there are um, companies out there putting out software, which, which is awesome, and it's terribly, terribly expensive. And there are other tools out there that are free, you know, and you can, there are websites where you can type in your subject matter as a layperson, you can type in your subject matter, and you can collect information and you can collect a mountain of, of information and you can connect dots that are um, dots that need to be connected. So um, I'm going to be doing another video um, on the uh, two Jordanians that um, went to Quantico on May 5th of 2024 in a box truck. And they got inside the gate and there was a situation that happened. The guys got arrested and um, then um, the tail got taller on down the line. What um, the cops told the press, uh, what the courts told the press or didn't tell the press, what the court records said, what the court records didn't say, who the two guys are. And then all of a sudden you've got you've got narratives and you've got letters flying back and forth that they're terrorists and they, you know, are in this country illegally and. Um, they were posing as Amazon drivers and they were on the terror watch list and you have all these things. So this is a situation that I looked into and I went out 
and I got all of the information on that particular incident and the two guys involved in the incident, everybody involved, everybody involved in the incident. And I pulled it all down into a package. And so we're able to go from dot one, which is two door, two, two door, two door Jordanians went to Quantico to, oh, you know, uh, they're this, that, and the other thing. Okay. So I'm going to connect the dots all in between about what we know and what we don't know. And I can guarantee you it paints a very different picture than what is still circulating out there about terrorists running amok in the United States, you know, and these two happen to be a part of that. So these are the things that, you know, I, I think it's important to know what the dots are. And in terms of Ukraine, the dots that are important are what's happening on the battlefield, how the weapons are performing, what are the casualties on both sides, what is the territory being conquered, how are the commands um, working and, and functioning, who's waging a better war, um, what are the politics that Ukraine is doing that is affecting Europe? Um, how important is, is Zelensky? And let's talk about him for a second. Let's connect some dots here, okay? Zelensky isn't just an actor, okay? He's a Jewish man who has a law degree who is essentially by trade, a script writer. He's a writer. He's a brilliant writer. And he and his um, company, and I believe his wife is included in that, built an entertainment business. He told his dad, he said, hey, Pops, I, I don't want to be in a law firm my whole life. I want to write comedy and I want to build an entertainment company. And, you know, he did, and he was enormously successful and he became an actor because he's writing the character. And essentially he was the best to play, to play the part, right? He was also a Patriot. And that's why he put out the series called servant of the people. Okay. He's got a beautiful wife and beautiful children. This is not somebody who has the time to be a political money launderer and a sex trafficker and an organ harvester and a, a, a pervert. It's just not in his nature to be that. Okay. So he comes into, he comes into power in 2019. He wins this election and he comes into power in 2019 and just take a look at the pictures of his face then on day one in the office or when he's, you know, uh, young, when he was younger to what he looks like now. And the um, ability for him to put his talents together, his intelligence, hit put to put together his talents, his intelligence his ability to critically think. And, and one of the most important things is his ability to be with people and to do what a politician needs to do. He's a visionary with a vision. And he went around Europe and he met people and he gathered support for his country. And what did he offer in return? you know, the blood and treasure of his country. So <clears throat> he has been able to do incredible and remarkable things, and he is inspirational. So my projection for Ukraine is that I don't think that Trump is just going to march in there and bully everybody. Um, because there's a lot of, there could be um, gaps in his knowledge base about all the things that Putin has done. 
you know, um, and everything that he has done to that country, stealing the children, um, blowing up the Kokova Co- Dam, which just destroyed tons and tons of agricultural products and villages, bombing the citizens every night and that kind of thing. And, and so there's, he's going to have issues, I think. And he's, I also think that he's going to be meeting, um, encountering a stronger and more united Europe because Zelensky wants not another security agreement, which we failed the last one, not another Minsk agreement, not another agreement that Putin is going to violate and not um, honor. He wants Putin out of his country and put in his place. He does not want Putin to have any victory whatsoever with a concession of the Donbass, a concession of of the Crimea, the reopening of the gas pipe going from the Kursk region, you know, through Ukraine, down into Europe, you know, all these things. They want Putin stopped once and for all. And that means a defeat on the battlefield and to not give Putin an inch of territory. And it is important. And... <clears throat> When I went to Ukraine in 2023, this is what the people want. They are united. They're not divided like our country. They are a united people. And they are united in that they do not want to be under the Russian boot, which was what the revolution of dignity, the Maidan revolution was all about. And what do we hear? Oh, it was the CIA coup, you know, to overthrow, you know, and then they stop right there. Oh, you know, that's the end of the conversation with that. You know, the people out there on the ground are the young people of that country, the 20 year olds, the 30 year olds, the 40 year olds, and even the 50 year olds that went out there almost a million strong during the 2013, the winter of 2013 and 2014 to let Yanukovych know Putin is not going to tell us what to do and neither are you get out. And they succeeded. They succeeded. And he left, you know, in a helicopter and, and, you know, it's been history ever, ever since. That is what the young people of Ukraine want. They want self-determination and self-governance. And they don't want a Russian rule anymore, anywhere. So having said that, what I think is important to tell anybody who still does not support the fight for Ukraine, the enemies attacking Ukraine, Russia, North North Korea and Iran Iran are the same people who are behind Hamas and Hezbollah. So that one didn't work out very well either for the narrative, did it? Because you can't support Israel and not support Ukraine when they are both being attacked by the same enemy and their weapons. Okay, that doesn't make sense, does it? Okay. Number that's number one. And number two, why is it okay for an American to say Ukraine needs to take the knee to Russia? Because I'll be more comfortable when the war stops and my tax dollars won't be going over there so that they can, you know, win the war against a dictator and a tyrant. That's such an easy way to just dismiss the whole argument whatsoever. And, you know, for us to not bear any discomfort at all, we don't care about Ukraine. We can't even find it on a map. (laughs) So what we need to do is we need to go from not being able to find Ukraine on the map to having a real understanding of their Russian aggressor. And now they're North Korean aggressor, they're Iranian aggressor, and quite possibly they're Chinese aggressor. 
we need to go from from not being able to find Ukraine on the map to figuring out what they are doing over there for the world, how important they are to the world food supply, which is between eight and nine percent of the world's grain. Um, what is their relationship with Turkey? How, if it's okay for Ukraine, if you are a person or somebody in your family or your friends or whatever who say that it's okay for Ukraine to take a knee to Russia, is that also going to be okay for Finland, Estonia, uh, Poland, Latvia, Lithuania, Hungary, uh, Romania? Um, Sweden, the the whole Baltic, all of Europe. I mean, do we not care that much? Because we think, oh, you know, just that's all that Putin's going to do. Do you do you see what I'm saying to you? How ignorant it is! How ignorant it is to to just you know fall for a gossipy uh, type of narrative. Okay, and that's what they did. The people who staunchly supported Trump when the whole Stormy Daniels story came out, a lot of them were the same people who staunchly determined that Zelensky was a puppet of Joe Biden. They demonized him like that. It was that easy for them for them to do it. So easy is the operative word here, comfort and easy. And I learned from a friend of mine the other day, his name is Chuck Colton. He's got a really great thing uh, on YouTube as well. And he was talking about a situation where he was on a journalist assignment and they had this really bad feeling about where, where, you know, they were staying and they ended up leaving, which was a really good idea to do. Uh, they all decided they needed to leave the hotel where they were staying. And it was a good thing because, um, you know, uh, the hotel was attacked that night and they all, it could have gone very badly for all of them. And you could go watch his video. It's about Hezbollah, I believe, and, um, you know, get the story from him. But the, the, the lesson in the story was you don't make a decision based on pride fear, um, or comfort and co the, the comfort thing and the pride thing are the two elements. As far as I can see that people have made their decisions on who or what Zelensky is, uh, what he has done and what he is doing, you know, that, oh, he's got, uh, mansions in Florida now, and he's got yachts and he, it, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Do you see how ridiculous it is? So you can apply that to anything. You can apply to why you would vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz um, in terms of the slogans they give you, um, the things that they say to you that make you feel warm and fuzzy. Oh, she's going to do this and they're going to do that. And I feel all warm and fuzzy about that. So I'm going to vote for them. That's the easy thing to do. The hard thing to do is to research Kamala Harris, her track record as an attorney or the lack thereof, her associations with black power groups and, 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 uh, significant ties to um, Chinese Communist Party people and their agendas. It's much harder to do research to look into the people that you are supporting, you know, and but um, I think it's the civic duty to do that kind of thing. And right now, I can tell you, we live in a time where those answers are not easy, but they are out there. And it's a matter of finding sources that you like that are good and accurate sources that you can learn from, that not just pad your pride or pad your feelings or pad your intellect in a way where you're really not learning anything. You're just kind of affirming what Tucker Carlson has told you. 
you know, because you like his analysis or whatever. I mean, this is a guy who who's who's so desperate right now. In my view, he's out there trying to tell people that he had a, a monster demon clawing him in his bed at night and he had claw marks all over him. Where's the photos? Where's the photos? I mean, you you got to have open source intelligence information is above all at its core above all and at its core you guys it's about transparency that's why it's called open source open source intelligence it's got to be transparent it can't just be somebody's um opinion you've got to prove it the plaintiff in a lawsuit has the burden of proof if you're making an accusation you have the burden of proof. It's really that simple. It's really that simple. And, you know, I challenge these people to admit that they were wrong, admit that they got fooled, admit that they were on the wrong, tr wrong track and, and change course. And, and if you do that, you'll find that, that what is out there to, um, uh, that that's actually happening is is so um, rich and exciting and way beyond the some kind of narrative that Zelensky is a money launderer. Okay, and okay, and did you see what he said lately? Did you see what he he's done lately? Um, you know, I mean. The truth that's out there is far more exciting than the lies that we are being fed by, by people we thought we respected and people that we thought were telling us the truth, right? We shouldn't support these people. They are news people that are there to do a job and they should be held to the response to a higher level of duty to tell us the truth. And if they are not telling us the truth, then, then we need to get rid of them because they are acting in a method that is just gross negligence and it is malicious and it is fraud. And we should not be personally offended when someone that we know who we will probably never get within a football field of right is his is lying to us and being paid by russia okay oh oh you know i have people get so upset when you tell them well you know that guy that you listen to every night he's a he's a big liar who's getting paid by russia and they're just oh my god oh they don't want to be your friend anymore they don't want to listen to you anymore because they can't handle the truth right like jack nicholson said in that movie you can't handle the truth well they can't handle the truth and the truth is far more interesting than the the stuff they're being sold the stuff they are being sold it's far more interesting so that's what i have today i'm going to be doing probably more of these videos because i have some stuff to talk about and uh, to you guys, and thank you for joining the channel. This is the Centrist Post. Um, you can see my personal blog. I will put a link in it below. And um, go out there and do some, some research. Some research, folks. Thanks.